He's been found liable for sexual assault, for defamation. He has to pay $83 million as a result. And yet the net effect of this may very well be it boosts him in this primary contest. We've seen this movie before, right? Uh, the, famously, just before the 2016 election, the famous Access Hollywood tape, which made a blip in the news cycle in the grand scheme of things. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to influence uh, his support in the polls. $83 million, though, is a lot of money. And we are now in an election year, and people are starting to pay attention to things that maybe they hadn't been paid attention to before. He's been adjudicated uh, in civil court as guilty of sexually assaulting E. Jean Carroll. That's not nothing. And now a second jury now has, has determined that he defamed her as well uh, to the tune of $83 million. He will appeal. It's very possible that amount can come down. Appeals courts are often very skeptical of the punitive damages, which is a big part of this, uh, $65 million worth of it. Uh, and so there's a lot more to litigate. But as Trump is in court, in civil court, in criminal court, all over courtrooms, he's not on the campaign trail. He didn't do a fundraiser in Arizona this week because he was in court uh, fighting this case. And he's spending uh, tons of money in legal bills out of his campaign funds to fight these kinds of cases that he could be using for attack ads in battleground states. Yeah, you wonder how long he can actually campaign from the courtroom. So far, he's been pretty successful at doing that. But we do remember, and to your point, that that libel ruling was is already out there some time ago. Does the dollar figure change anything for him politically? It's certainly a headline-grabbing number. He was yeah. uh, liable for $5 million in damages in the previous case. $83 million is something that might get people's attention. Um, but, and I don't know if, if it's as much about the money as it is uh, the, uh, just the cumulative effect of these, these verdicts and these trials over the course of the next year. And if you're a Republican, you've got to be thinking, uh, okay, like, is this, uh, does this damage his electability? So far it has. It, it's only uh, bolstered his support among Republicans. Independent voters will just have to wait and see in November. Gregory Cordy, we thank you for being with us on the breaking news this evening. Meantime, the White House announcing new restrictions for the energy sector. National Climate Advisor Ali Zaidi speaking to reporters earlier today. The Biden-Harris administration is announcing a pause on pending applications to export liquefied natural gas to non-free trade agreement countries uh, from here in the United States. The department's pause will remain in effect until the agency updates key economic and environmental analyses. Driving our coverage on this today, Bloomberg's Jennifer DeLuey with us in studio in Washington. Jennifer, we've seen reviews like this before. Why does it have to come with a pause? Well, it doesn't, and that's a, certainly an argument that we're hearing from the oil industry and its allies mm -hmm. on Capitol Hill. Uh, in 2012, Obama undertook a very similar study, came with a two-year pause. It was before the election. Yes, But subsequent that? analysis has been done concurrent with reviews. Here, of course, this could take us well past the November election. And for some uh, advocates of the president, that's uh, an attribute. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a tough, tough issue for the president. Uh, it really uh, drives... Uh, a wedge with uh, climate activists. These approvals were fiercely fought and they were demanding an end to them. And uh, obviously putting this decision off, these decisions off until after November causes uh, some, eases some of that friction before election day. On one side, sure. On the other side, maybe not so much. We've certainly seen some pretty harsh responses from members of Congress. The Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, has said this is outrageous. And even a Democratic Senator, Joe Manchin of West Virginia, who chairs the uh, Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, says he's going to investigate this. And if he finds this really is mostly politically motivated, he'll do everything he can to stop this pause from taking place. How contentious could this be moving forward? Oh, you know, we're only seeing the start of it. I mean, this is this is already, uh, a, you know, a fierce fight on, on the Hill where Republicans are, are going to be looking for every avenue to stop it. And they will have help from allies potentially like Democrat Joe Manchin, as well as some other vulnerable Democrats. There's obviously uh, going to be an attempt to uh, affect this through the debate and on a deal on immigration and spending. That's a possibility that there could be some legislation to intervene and stop this pause moving through that process. Uh, you know, we're also hearing quite a lot from the Hill about what this means for European allies. And there's a real effort to ensure that European uh, leaders make their voices heard and uh, get a little bit more active in complaining about this. Yeah, the U.S. is providing a lot of LNG to Europe because Europe had to cut off That's the right. Russian flow. Jennifer DeLuey, thank you so much for your 
terrific reporting on this. Now, turning to the wider issue of the U.S. economy, and certainly energy, energy prices do play a factor, U.S. Deputy Treasury Secretary Wale Adeyemo says the economy is in better shape than that of any other major country in the world, but added there's still more work to be done. We know that there's more that we need to do in terms of trying to make sure that we put more pocket in the more money in the pockets of the middle class in America, and that that's exactly what the president and secretary are committed to doing. We, we're, we're not declaring victory; rather, we're saying we've made progress, and we can, we're going to continue to make that progress going forward. And joining us now is Bloomberg's Enda Kern. And Enda, speaking uh, of progress being made going forward, we got some economic data today that arguably was pretty good news for the administration. Personal spending doing pretty well, and the Fed's preferred inflation gauge going in the right direction, which is down. Yeah, it's been a very strong week in terms of economic data, Kaylee. As you mentioned, the core inflation numbers coming in there at the slowest in three years. You had the strongest back-to-back -back, uh, monthly performance for consumer spending in a year. Of course, that comes a few days after we had the blowout GDP data earlier this week. But all of that is kind of in the rearview mirror now, confirming that, you know, last year was a obviously a great year for the economy, but it's also probably as good as it gets. We've already had a noticeable tick up in the number of layoffs being announced in different sectors of the economy throughout the month of January. We will get new jobs data next week, which of course will shed light on where just how strong the jobs market is or isn't. But, you know, while there's a feeling that things obviously have been, are in a good space right now, you'd have to say the soft landing camp is in control. There are certainly pockets of weakness that some economists are keeping a close eye on as well. You see, this is as good as it gets. And uh, if you're the White House, though, why not take victory for the soft landing? Isn't this it? Well, this is one of the views that's out there, and especially when it comes, by the way, to the debate over the Federal Reserve. Uh, look, one camp is arguing, take the win, call it a soft landing, and start bringing down interest rates. They don't have to be where they are. Uh, but, of course, there's a cautionary tale on the other side of that, both for the administration and, of course, the Fed. Uh, nobody wants to declare a victory only to see inflation return with a vengeance. There are some worry spots out there. Keep an eye on what's going on with the Red Sea and how that impacts both energy costs, shipping costs, and eventually how that flows through to the cost of goods on the counter. Again, things are in a much better place right now than many would have thought even a year ago. But uh, there's a fair degree of caution, I think, around declaring mission accomplished.